All right, here we go. CP the Franchise here, creator of Knicks Fan TV and the NBA Report. On today's video, I'm sharing my keynote presentations from NBA Summer League Sports Business Classroom on building a brand. You don't just have to be a content creator to build a brand. Whether you wanna move up in your career or you wanna advance your business, building a brand is crucial to separate yourself from the competition. So in this episode, you're gonna learn the importance of building a brand, how to build a brand, as well as social media tips for building your brand and we're gonna look at it through the lens of Knicks Fan TV. This presentation was also done with my guys Nikias Duncan and Steve Jones from the Dunker Spot Podcast. So take notes, but most importantly, like, share, and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the other side. Peace. Gentlemen, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. All right, thank you, Eric. SBC, let's make some noise, man. Let's make some noise. Let's go. This is a uh, tremendous opportunity to be here. Thank you to Eric, thank you to Bobby Marks and the good people of SBC to uh, allow me to be here. Uh, Bobby gave me a call about two months ago and said, hey, look, I have an opportunity for you. Would you like to do it? And I really didn't need much details from him before I said, yeah, let's go. And you know, that's, that's just who I am. And once again, I go by the name of CP, the franchise creator of Knicks Fan TV and the NBA Report. And I'd like my guys to introduce themselves as well. Your mic on? <laughs> Tremendous content. Uh, but I am Nikaias Duncan, co-host of the Dunker Spot Podcast. I'm Steve Jones Jr., also co-host of the Dunker Spot Podcast. So excited to be here, share our story, and talk about building our brand and kind of the different stories and paths to where we've gotten right here. Absolutely. So, Joe, if you don't mind, let's take it away. We're going to go to the sizzle reel just to give you a little bit of an inside of Knicks Fan TV and, and the journey. So for those who don't know, you run Knicks Fan TV. You're the, you're the creator of it. You're the yep. face of it. You, my friend, have disrupted the biggest sports market that there is, the most cutthroat competitive market there is, and forced your way in to, to be like a real voice. Did you ever dream that this would start when you were interviewing people outside of the garden. I tell the story all the time is that, you know, I grew up on, on Mike and the Mad Dog. Good afternoon, everybody. That was always the foundation of my sports fandom. Crunch time. Jason Tatum or Jalen Brunson? No, I'm taking Jason Tatum. They were a good team. You would take Jalen Brunson over Jason Tatum? In a, in a big spot? Absolutely. Absolutely. He was in crunch time, I'm going to number 11 over many in this game. You know what CP just did? Yeah. He ruined my entire point. <laughs> you played in 143 playoff games. You started in 129. What's the hardest thing about closing out a series? Why, why is it so difficult? From what I see on the court and, and your demeanor, it's, it's the confidence, the drive. You never get too high, never get too low. Make or miss, you have the same even keel. And I think that's very important, especially in terms of this town. Can the Clippers come back from that? They can, but the Mavs have momentum right now, man. Uh, Steph, you, you came back to the Garden. You made your return to the Garden just a couple yeah. weeks ago. Standing ovation in MSG, a MSG moment for you. Six foot five can play three different positions. And so he may not be the big wing that the Knicks really need, but he can play big. And as I said, a guy who could possibly close as well, Tom Thibodeau is certainly gonna like him. I'd like to watch CP and get my news from him. No, this is not the star. However, I think we have to reprogram ourselves and take away from just who's the star that's going to save everything. Well, he certainly gets it here in New York. I mean, Jalen Brunson has been so dynamic for this Knicks franchise in just one and a half years. Not taking it to the basket is going to be his strength, but how he does that is going to determine how good of a game he has. And you're seeing him make a more concerted effort in finding his teammates, finding three-point shooters on the weak side. Some shot creation ability from OG, and, and so the Knicks have just been dominant when he, when he plays. That's CP, I didn't know you turned into Kevin Pelton on us. I like it, man. Thank you for bringing the numbers. Knicks Fan TV is the best, you know, site to go to. You go to work every day. You can't wait to get to work. Being part of Knicks Fan TV is being part of a community. We bring the people close to the, to the action, whether you're far away or you're close to the home. We recap every game. We take all the reactions. And after everything that goes on with that team, we come to Knicks Fan TV for the reaction. All right, so that was a little bit about the, the KFTV journey. Yeah, give some noise. Give some noise. Uh, I appreciate yeah. that. Appreciate that. Uh, Joe, next next slide, please. All right, so let's, let's break this down to the studs, man. What is a brand? But so somebody just throw throw a, a definition out there. What well, what is a brand? What do you think, sir? 
You want to volunteer. Go ahead. Me? Um, uh, something you identify with. What do you think? I would consider a brand a symbol, a logo, um, some type of imagery or something that is, it gives awareness to whatever it is that you're promoting, you're selling your product, your service. One more, one more. Uh, I think it's basically your identity, how you want to be portrayed. Next slide, Joe. So this was a quote from, by Jeff Bezos on building your brand. Your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. I think you came closest to it. And for all you guys in the room, that's what you need to think about over the course of this weekend, over the course of your journey. How do you want to be perceived? How do you want others to view you when you're not in the room? That is the core of your brand. Next one, Joe. More on personal branding, it's your unique value proposition. A unique value proposition, you can look at it from you know, the way corporate brands brand themselves, consumer packaged goods, but from a personal brand, it's your skills, your expertise, your journey, what makes you unique, how do you stand out from the crowd. That's how you wanna look at your unique value proposition. It's the promise that you make to your audience. So, you know, Bobby Marks was in that sizzle reel, and you know, when I think about Bobby Marks and his brand, whenever there is a transaction, a free agent transaction, a trade, you know where to find Bobby Marks. He's on ESPN TV. He's on YouTube doing his own breakdown. He's on Twitter breaking down the team's outlook from the salary cap standpoint. What are their draft picks? And he makes his own graphics. Shout out to, shout out to Bobby on that one. Makes his own graphics. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put, putting in the work, but, but that's what you come to expect from Bobby. And again, it's how you want to be perceived. Next uh, slide, Joe. Building a brand is crucial. A lot of you guys, you guys are, are learning across the different silos of SBC, cap management, media and broadcast, agents. No matter what it is, you need to build a brand to separate yourself from the rest, from the competition. It allows you to build credibility and trust. That's big, that's been big for me in terms of building my brand, credibility and trust. Every episode that we do and we try to bring value to our audience, it's another way for us to build credibility to a stranger, a new fan, or someone who is unaware of who we are. We wanna be able to establish that credibility and trust. Networking opportunities. When you're out there and you're introducing yourself, you're making your elevator pitch, it's about your brand, who you are, what makes you unique, what makes you separate from the rest, what are you bringing to the table. And when you're out there networking, it's not just about what you're looking for or your goal. It's about what you can bring to that person, to that organization. Always look to provide value. Don't just look to take from that opportunity. Always look to see how can I input my value for this person because it goes a long way. Thought leadership. Building your brand, when you're out there providing value and you know, presenting your, your insights, it allows you to develop as a thought leader. And then career mobility. You know, where you are right now in your journey is not where you're going to end up. So always think about wherever you are, putting your best foot forward, providing that value, and then looking to mobilize. It could be laterally, it could be upwards, but it's all about building your brand to get there. Next slide, Joe. Here's some brand examples of some people who have done a great job of, of developing their brands. How about Stephen A. Smith? What do you, what do you think about when, when you think about Stephen A. Smith's brand? Just throw some names out there, adjectives out there. What do you think? Authentic. Authentic? Loud. Loud. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, bold. <laughs> Aggressive. Aggressive. All right, how about uh, J.J. Reddick, the new coach of the Los Angeles Lakers? What do you think about J.J. Reddick's brand? Fantastic. You said so, what? What? Fantastic. Player oriented. Player oriented. You said IQ. Okay. Fresh. 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 It's a good one. How about Shannon Sharp? How about Unk? <laughs> Undeniably himself. Okay. How about his airness? Michael Jordan. What do you guys think? Go. Iconic. Swag. Tough. And rest in peace to the late, great Jerry West, someone who we had hoped to come here and be here with us. 
What do you think about uh, when you think about Jerry West? I think legacy. The legacy. Okay. The logo. The logo. Right. There's, there's no better way to showcase your brand than being the actual logo, the face of the league, All right. or symbol of the league, rather. Next one, Joe. Keys to building your brand. It has to start with knowing who you are. You have to do a self audit. Who am I? What am I passionate about? What drives me? What do I love to do? And how do I want to show that to the world? How do I want to show the world? Uh, define your niche. We heard that yesterday. And it's great because a, a lot of the key words that you see in this presentation, a lot of the speakers yesterday spoke on it. Bill Duffy spoke about it. Uh, Warren Legary spoke about it. Eric, Bobby, uh, the keynote speaker yesterday. Steve, and I'm, I'm chopping up his last name. I don't remember his last name. But they all spoke about a lot of these key words. Defining your niche. Niche it down. My niche was in catering to Knicks fans. I'm, I'm a diehard Knicks fan. I wanted to cater to Knicks fans. Uh, Steven and, and Nikias, they're breaking down X and O's. They're breaking down the film to a science. That is a niche. Creating a consistent message. Consistency, consistency, consistency is the key. It's the key in terms of the content that you're putting out there, the look, the feel, the sound. You want to be consistent so that you know so that your audience knows or that your, your target knows what to expect from you. Networking strategically. Always look to network, always look to build. I think it was Bill Duffy yesterday that talked about, at the end of the day, it's still people business, right? Relationships are a part of life. It's not just you know, building your brand or own business. Relationships are a part of life. And so always think about that as you're carrying forward. Sharing your expertise, and someone else mentioned in, in the realm of Stephen A, being authentic. Most important thing, don't try to be anybody but yourself because that is how you stand out with your experiences, your journey. That is what separates you from each other. It's being authentic. Next slide, Joe. Crafting your brand story. Everyone in here has a story. You need to tell it, you need to show it, and you need to show the world. It's more than just a bio or a resume. You can find, we can find your resume on LinkedIn, we can find it anywhere in a sheet of paper, but that doesn't tell us the whole story, right? Why did I start Knicks Fan TV? Well, I wasn't satisfied with how mainstream media was covering my team. I wasn't satisfied with the way the local media was, was covering my team. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna kick the door down and I'm gonna do it myself because as a diehard Knicks fan, I know that there are Knicks fans out there that want more than just hot takes or you know, scandals and things of that nature. They, they want the real, they wanna learn about the best guy on the team or the guy who's in the G League trying to make it. And so we've been able to, to satisfy that white space, cover that white space for, for our fans. Know your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you wanna pursue what you are pursuing? Know that, because it's a way to differentiate yourself. And as I said, it builds an authentic connection with your audience. When I'm out there portraying my story as a diehard for the fans, by the fans, it resonates. It resonates with fans in New York, and it especially resonates with fans who are from out of town. One of the biggest things that fans tell me when we travel across the country and meet with fans is, you know, you bring us closer to home. You bring us closer to the action. I feel like I'm part of something, a part of a community. And that is when you are portraying your authentic self, you make that connection. Document your journey. How many of you guys so far have been documenting your journey here at SBC and Summer League? Show by a raise of hands on social media at some point. Document, document, document your journey. By the end of this week, you guys should all have a reel or a picture, a blog post, a podcast on your experience here at Summer League. You know, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, a hashtag that we make. Like Maybe it's like SBC Summer League, where on Twitter, on Instagram, we can go to that and we can see everyone's journey so far. It's that journey that kind of feeds into that authentic connection with your fans. Like when my fans see the things that I'm doing along the way, it makes them want to support even more because they feel like they've been there from the beginning. Next slide, Joe. Building your brand across platforms. This is one of the most important slides you want to take down. How many of you guys, by a show of hands, when it, as it relates to your brand, are putting content out there on social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. How many are doing it every day? Okay. How many do it on, you know, once a week or so, occasionally? 
This is key. Content is king. That is the way that you are going to put yourself out there as a brand. And I don't care if, if you're an introvert, if you're an extrovert, you need to be making content because all these social media platforms, that's where everybody is, right? Everybody's scrolling, everybody's doing a power scroll, whatever it is. They're looking at dog videos, cat videos, house of highlights, shade room. That's where everybody is. So that is the playing field that you want to be operating on to showcase yourself and showcase your brand. Consider your content pillars. When you're, how many by a show of hands feel like you're, you're unsure of the content that you want to put out there? By a show of hands, let's keep it real. How many of you are, are, are scared to put yourself out there? All, right. all, all fair, all fair. You have to consider the content pillars. When you're creating content, there are three key areas that you need to consider. Are you educating? Are you inspiring? Or are you providing humor? Think about that in terms of the, the, the brands that you follow on social media, right? What are you getting out of, out of that content when you're looking? Most, most likely you're laughing or, or somebody's breaking something down like, oh man, I didn't know that before, it's educational. Or it's an, it's an inspiring story. Think about that when you're making content in, in that realm, the three content pillars. Finding your medium. Some of you might not wanna do video and that's okay. I prefer video and I'll tell you why in a second. But some of you might not wanna do video. But there are other platforms. There's audio, there's a newsletter, there's a blog post, there's still images, there's Twitter. There are many different platforms that you can utilize to get your brand out there and it doesn't necessarily have to be video. So you have to find your, your medium. Every platform is different. What works on Instagram may not work on Twitter. What works on Twitter may not work on LinkedIn. Every platform is different and you need to learn the nuances of each of those platforms. Our video is versatile. The reason I like video is for one, it, it can go far, it can travel far in terms of reach. But also from video, you can break it down from a micro content standpoint. So, so from a video from my show, the Post Game Show, we, can, we put it in a podcast. We put it up on our website. You can cut a, a, a excerpt from it and, and post it into um, an Instagram post or a Twitter post. So from video, you can really break this thing down and that's why I prefer video. Collaborate. Collaboration is key. All of you guys that are in different silos from your agent guys, your cap guys, your scout, that's your, that's your squad. Collaborate with each other, make content with each other. Don't just view each other as competition, but look at it as a rising tide lifts all boats, right? You might have an audience that your audience that you're not familiar with, he might have an audience that you're not familiar with. Collaborate, collaborate and, and tap into, into those audience. Steve, Steve, did you want to get anything on that? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is if you're talking about collaborating, it's more about how can you do it together? What can you do as far as the brand goes? And so when you tie it all together, your brand is who you are. And, you know, some people want to do scouting, some people want to do videos, some people want to do media. No matter what you want to do, your path is going to be your path. You've got to embrace it. And if you can't be authentic and genuine in those moments every single day, eventually, People are going to look at you a little different, right? If it's not coming from the heart, if it's not something you want to do, people are going to look at you a little different, right? But if you have the desire to do it every single day, that will stand out. If you're consistent in your efforts every single day, that will stand out. And if you do that enough, to tie it back to what you had on the earlier slide, the people who are in the different rooms, they will talk about you in a different way. All set. Next slide, Joe. All right, more on building across platform. You may get overwhelmed by all the content that's out there. You may be dejected by thinking, you know, this, it's so saturated, everybody's doing this, everybody's doing that. There is competition, but there's competition for low quality content. I got, I got this from a, a podcast, and it's true. High quality content is still gonna stand out. And the way that these social media algorithms are built today is to reward you for putting out high quality content. So don't let that dissuade you from making content. You just have to work on figuring out what does my audience want, what do they value, and the numbers will show. Stay consistent, focus on value. I talked about staying consistent. Bring it every day or frequency that you're comfortable in, in, uh, in posting. 
test, test, and test. What I mean by that is don't be afraid to try new things on social media, whether it's a video, a blog, you know, a blog post, a Twitter post, whatever it is, don't be afraid to try new things and see what that reaction, what reaction you get from your audience. Try something, let it marinate for a little bit, look at the numbers, if it doesn't work, try it another way. Always look to test. I'm at the point now in my journey and my brand where if I post something on Instagram within the first five minutes, if I don't feel like it's getting the engagement that I'll expect it to get, I'll bring it back to my team and say, hey, let's, let's tweak this. Let's, let's take the end, bring it to the beginning. First three seconds are crucial. Let's try this this way. And a lot of times it'll work, but you have to be willing to test, test, test your content. Know your numbers. You guys are salary cap guys. You guys are analytic guys. You guys are always in the numbers. It's the same thing with social media. The numbers are going to tell you how your content is performing. So take a look at that. Take a look at that on a periodic basis. Every platform has insights that you want to take a look at. Just like you're doing in your respective field, take a look at the numbers on your social platforms and just to see where things are performing and to tell you where you want to go. That is your roadmap. Next slide, you. Be community builders. Another important one. This is one where when I build my brand and, and create content, it's on the back end, it's about community. On every single platform, there's a conversation going on about the Knicks or whether it's NBA report about the NBA on every platform. And that is because over time, we've been able to build a community. And it starts with engagement, creating engaging content, bringing your fans into the fold to get their take. What is your take on this situation? You know, Knicks are building the, uh, on their way to building the dynasty right now. Talk to me about Macau Bridges. What do you guys think? And from there, the community builds and it builds. And ultimately, you build loyalty. And if you look, these are the same people that will comment on your posts, same people that will show up to your events. That loyalty starts to build up over time. Next one, Joe. All right, you can play this one. Uh, no sound on this one. So this is, this is kind of just like an inside of KFTV. This was my first ever video that I put out there on YouTube. I had no idea what I was doing. I bought a $20 tripod from Amazon and took it outside to Madison Square Garden. But I had my niche and I knew who I was. I was a diehard Knicks fan that wanted to get more Knicks fans into the fold and have their opinions be heard. June 22nd, 2017, I went out there and just started interviewing fans. This was during the NBA draft. And at the time, the hot rumor was that Phil Jackson was looking to trade Kristaps Porzingis potentially to get uh, uh, Devin Booker or uh, to trade him to the Celtics. So that's what we kind of started the day out by doing. And, you know, that was, that was one of the, the, uh, the original videos. First video. It did, it did fairly well, but the rest didn't. <laughs> Next one. Next slide. Okay. can play this one being consistent and providing value. This was another uh, of my first videos because I knew I wanted to do post-game recaps. This is how I started in a room with no lights, terrible camera. I just bought my house, no setup in the, in, in the room. Echo abound, terrible video. Did probably about 400 views on YouTube, but I stuck with it knowing that I had my niche, I had my passion, and over time as you level up, the, the audience will get there. Next one, Joe. Oh, good. Consistent message. A few slides ago, I talked about consistency. Uh, one of our flagship shows is Post Game Live. After every game, Knicks fans know, come to YouTube, come to Knicks Fan TV. We're going to break it down with highlights, analysis, and, and fans will be able to call in and, get to, and share their thoughts, share their takes. Consistency is also in our branding, our color schemes, our logo. Everything is consistent. Uh, this is our play-by-play -play show. It's a cover for our play-by-play -play show where uh, we have our guys CK2K and JD Sports Talk calling the game uh, for the fans who don't have access to uh, the content, the live rights. Uh, this is the big perk on, on KFTV. This is one of our, our interviews, kind of our overlay and our theme. And our guy Bobby Marks. A big time contributor and collaborator uh, on Knicks Fan TV. But, you know, it, it, when Bobby Marks comes on, it's another example of collaborating. It's another example of expanding your network. And Bobby's been on about four episodes now. 
They've all done cumulatively about you know, 150, 200,000 views because it's a value. My audience knows when, when Bobby comes on, they're getting an inside from a GM's perspective, breaking down the cap, breaking down the Knicks' latest move. We're going to learn something, and that is what my audience can expect every time he comes on. And I hope he's not in the room right now because the next one might cost me a little bit more. Next one. Networking strategically. Over time, as, as the brand is built up, uh, opportunities come. Sometimes it's, it's just, sometimes you don't have to go out there and look for it. If, if you make good content, you provide value, and you build your brand the right way, opportunities will come. And so just going clockwise, uh, I've had the opportunity to collaborate with SNY TV. They are the local, think of it as ESPN, but covering New York sports. So I am a uh, NBA analyst for Honda Sports Night. Uh, my travels also took me to the, the Max Kellerman show where I did an eight-week stint with Max Kellerman uh, on his show at the time we were covering the NBA playoffs, uh, Sirius XM NBA radio, as well as WFAN, uh, the local uh, radio station there in New York. Next slide, Joe. Crafting your brand story. I talked about uh, telling your story, who you are, what you're passionate about. The way that I went about doing that was when I created a documentary on my journey called Fantastic Voyage. I did that about three years ago, uh, chronicling, chronicling the, the rise of our platform, which coincided with uh, the Knicks' first playoff appearance in about eight years. That was during the pandemic. Again, the Max Kellerman show was another way for me to craft my story because at the time, he was viewed as a villain. Every time he went on first take, he would, he would say something that went against the Knicks and Knicks fans would rail on him. We can't take this guy. And so I took him on one-on-one, -on -one, went through a whole series of eight weeks, destroyed him, and now you don't even see him on TV anymore. So I don't know. I don't, it might have been something that I said. No, but overall, he's a great guy. He's a mentor for me, and, and he really helped me out during that whole eight-week stint. Uh, this, Show, another show I did showcase my brand with David Tyree, Super Bowl winner, Super Bowl champion, and hero. Next slide. Uh, press play. It's another example of just building across platforms, just showing you guys some of the content examples and, and how we build across social media. So this was an Instagram reel that we had posted, and this was an old interview. This was an old interview that I did back during the pandemic with Channing Fry where he talked about some of the dysfunctional days about the Knicks, so we made it into a reel. Uh, we also do Instagram carousels, where we'll put a still image on the front end, and on the next end, we'll put a clip from one of our shows to promote our shows to take that that we had produced. Um, some more content here. You can skip a little bit forward. A little bit forward, Joe. This was a tweet that I put out there in terms of the Knicks front office and how they, how they, uh, just go back one more, Joe. Oh, oh, I press play. Go about midway through. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, this is me wiling out for the Macau Bridges trade. I was super excited. It was an incredible night. And so this is a tweet I put out there on Twitter in regards to the Rose regime and the success that they've been having in terms of navigating the, the new CBA requirements. Go ahead and press play, Joe. And just showing you across platforms. So this was on Twitter. I then took that same tweet and tried it on Instagram. How would people react to it? And it had a good reaction. Another example of building across platforms. I did a collaboration with RJ Barrett and Puma for a sneaker release. On Instagram, we put the still images from that day where we had a meet and greet with the fans and we did a live show. And then on LinkedIn, I took similar content, posted the sizzle reel on LinkedIn, but in a different lens. Because on LinkedIn, I was showing my audience the power of collaboration and taking them inside the collaboration between myself and the head of marketing on Puma and how we brought this event to life. Uh, you can go next slide. Andrew. Community building. Just a couple of examples of how we've been able to build community over the years. Top left, that was two years ago, Knicks playoffs versus the Cavs. That was at Jay-Z's iconic 40-40 club. Uh, dream come true for me because that was a venue that I had frequented as, as a youngster. And to be able to have that, we sold that out with, just with Knicks fans for the watch party. It was incredible. Uh, top left, we held a, a meetup in Los Angeles for our Knicks fan community in Los Angeles, myself and Jesus Nice. 200 people packed out this venue, and this was during NFL wildcard weekend. 
and the people were outside watching the football when the Knicks fans were inside watching a random regular season game. Bottom left, this was last year's play, this past playoffs, myself, Stephon Marbury. Bottom right, uh, we had a, another meetup in Cleveland. And so when I talk about building loyalty, building community, a lot of these people travel with us from city to city just to, con just to reconvene and also to attend the games with us as well. All right, next one. Uh, making history, the, the, the Cal Bridges trade. And this is just an example. When, when the trade went down and the news broke, I wasn't home, actually. I was, at a, I was at a Mets game, Mets versus Yankees game. And as soon as the news broke, I was at the game. I got phone calls right off the bat. And on Twitter, what you see here is emergency stream, emergency podcast, emergency podcast. These were our fans replying to me like, we got to get this show going. And write this book down. I need you guys to go out and get this book when it comes to branding. It's called Primal Branding. And the author is Patrick Hanlon. In Primal Branding, he discusses the seven key elements to building that loyal following. And what this is considered, where everybody's saying, we gotta go live, emergency live, this is called a ritual. What your fans expect, and what, you know, it's one of those common events that they expect from you. Because after every breaking news event, after every game, they know to come to Knicks Fan TV, and, uh, and we're gonna break it all down. Next slide, Joe. And these are just some more of our, our social assets across each platform. During that Macau Bridges trade, we broke our live viewership record. We had 10,000 live viewers watching uh, when we went live. Within 30 minutes, we had 10,000 people watching live for that YouTube stream. It was an incredible night. Uh, next one, Joe. Okay. All right. So I want to segue over to my guys, Nikias and Steven, to share their journeys and, and share how they've been able to establish themselves as a brand. So, Steve, just, just kick us off and, and talk about, you know, as an individual, what building your brand has kind of meant to your career overall. Building my brand's meant everything to me because uh, it's funny we kind of tie everything together because 2009, this building, SBC wasn't here, but I was at UNLV. I graduated from here, so I was had all this excitement and exuberance just like y'all. Thought for sure I was going to get a job. I had a basketball job lined up. I'm out of here. We're done. See you, Vegas. No, I was working at the Win front desk. Five years later, I was an assistant coach in the NBA. So again, your brand is your path. Your path is your journey. You have to embrace that. So no matter what you want to do, you have to A, know who you are, B, know what you want to do, and decide you want to do it every single day. You have to be consistent with that message. You have to find a way to get it done. I would say the biggest thing for me is building trust. When I got into the NBA, in the video room, I didn't necessarily have the belief, even though I played in college, I had a lot to learn. But the number one thing is I was going to be consistent, I was going to be reliable, and whatever you needed, it was going to get done. Any question that asked, I have the answer. If I didn't have the answer, I was going to learn the answer. So next time you ask me, I got the answer. Head coach, you don't ever have to worry about me. Worry about that. I got everything you need. That consistency builds that reliability inside. So they know, I don't have to worry about that guy. He's going to get it done. And when you do that every single day, as you mentioned earlier, hey, looking for someone, oh, Steve. Steve got you. Steve gets taken care of, go right there. So if you talk about building your brand in media, that's what I want to be. It's not necessarily you have to talk about basketball this way. You have to think about basketball this way. If you need a knowledge or an answer or a video clip or something about basketball, Steve got you. He's breaking it down a different way. You're going to learn something, you're going to laugh. That's what you want to bring to the table every single day with your brand. Something that echoes, and now you know it, right? You talk to him, he knows it. They know it. Word of mouth. It spreads. That's how you get it done. So that's the most important thing to me, is just my reliability, my authenticity, and uh, my work ethic. And I think just to bounce off of that, just that level of consistency, one, it shines through in everything that you do. So to your point about being yourself, that's going to shine through in whatever path that you take or whatever you want to do. If you are inconsistent at some point in your journey, that's going to pop up. And you don't want that to pop up in an area, in a situation where you don't need that to happen. And so for me, like building my, I guess, building my personal brand and stuff, I guess it's real, I come off as relatable just because I entered the basketball space just wanting to learn more. I found, you know, I learned very early in high school, like, okay, I'm not going to play in the NBA. Like, uh, 
that, that's not going to be a thing that's going to happen for me. But I know I love basketball. I know I want to learn more about it. And so let me put my head down and try to learn as much as I can. Let me watch as much as I can. Let me listen as much as I can. Let me ask questions whenever I can. You know, we're not too far removed from me bothering this guy and his DMs, asking about play names and all kind of stuff, just trying to pick his brain, trying to learn different things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I went, you know, I approached it as a writer first and foremost, like that's where my heart is, and being able to get my thoughts out in a way to where I'm not stumbling over typing words like I do when I'm speaking out here, so my apologies early on. But, you know, kind of bouncing from writing to now getting into more of the content space, like that love for basketball and ultimately that desire to learn hasn't left. And so in terms of consistency and being who you are, if you're listening to me or reading something that I say or you know, watching or listening to the dunker spot, you are coming to two people that love the game and they are actively seeking more answers to bounce off what Steve said about the game. This team is good, why are they good? This team isn't so good, why aren't they good? This player's really good, why? And like that sticks through, that general curiosity that Steve has, that I have, that comes through, that comes through in, I would imagine every other area of our life, just a general curiosity and stuff like that. And so to bounce off of what Steve said a little bit earlier, to bounce off of CP, you have to be authentic. You have to be yourself, especially in this content space to where there is a lot of saturation out there. Even in terms of high-level content, there is a lot of it out there. And so if you are chasing ghosts or chasing numbers or chasing recognition, at some point you are going to come across someone that just has it at a higher level than you do. And if you are not secure in yourself and what you're doing and believing in what you're doing, that is going to hit. Ask me how I know. So you have to have that internal belief in yourself. You have to, first and foremost, love what you're doing. I know it's a very cliche thing that's probably going to resonate throughout the entire week, but you got to love it. If I was doing this just to get as much money as I can or, you know, get our names X, Y, Z, I would never talk about the Charlotte Hornets on the podcast. Please stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> Loves the Hornets. I, I, I would not do that. But because I love basketball, I want to talk about what interests me. And I think that's been the easiest way that we have been able to build out what we have with the dunker spot is we're not just trying to talk about what's popular. We talk about whatever interests us. Sometimes that is Shea Gilders Alexander breaking out to an MVP. Sometimes for me it's, hey, Charlotte's defense actually looks good, and it normally doesn't. You know what I mean? Like it's a funny example, but at the heart of it is I love this. This is cool. I want to talk about it. And you have to have that trust that the people that are following you are following you because they trust you. And they know whether I'm talking about the Lakers, the Suns, the Celtics, or the Hornets, the Blazers, whatever. They know if Nikaias is talking about this, he cares about it. We're going to get an authentic thought about it. We're going to get hopefully something informed about it. And we can all kind of grow together. So I think it's very important for you to be secure in who you are. And that, that, that helps inform what you want to do. And it makes it easier to go through some of the, some of the speed bumps that you will approach when you go through stuff. But it, t it ties back to what CP said earlier as far as building that trust through your consistency. If you are only doing this once a week or twice a week or not every now and then, you're not going to have that same trust. It's going to look like you're reaching for something. You're searching for something. You're trying to get X, Y, Z. But if you do it all the time, now it's natural. I'm like, okay, all right, let me check this out. And so I think everything kind of just ties together. What do you think was the turning point for you? You said you were at the win at one point as you're pursuing your dream and it didn't come true. And on your terms, uh, at the time that you expected it, what was the turning point for you? Uh, the lockout, and then I went to Memphis and, and worked in the video room, worked in Brooklyn, and worked my tail off to achieve my dream, and then didn't, because we went to the playoffs and lost to the Hawks, and then we were really bad the next year, and that was it. But, different, different presentation for a different day. The turning point for me was turning to social media as like 28 year old, fresh out of the NBA looking to prove a point or make a name for myself and show that I knew stuff about basketball. And then I was just like, actually, I just love basketball. I'm going to watch these games anyway. Let me share my notes. And I realized, oh, people don't really like words that much. <laughs> Let me show them what I'm seeing. And so I added a clip to it. And then I just kept doing that over and over again. So my thing was just to show what I was learning about the game and hope that people would enjoy that. because you know, hot takes are hot takes, and that's fine. Do what you gotta do, there's a bunch of lanes. But I got so tired of the same post-game arguments that I wanted to be like, that's cool, but here's what actually happened. There's this that happened too. Let's talk about this defense. Let's talk about that offense, because it was always, what happened to this offense late? And they choked, and it's like, okay. But what about this? 
And so to me, it was more about not adding to the discussion more than taking over the discussion. So the turning point was just continuing to do that and people liked it. So I just kept doing it. And tie into your consistent point, because I could do it all the time, I was always there. And so that turned into a podcast, turned into all sorts of different opportunities. But the biggest thing was just being myself and being what and doing what I like to do and seeking and finding joy in the game and sharing that with other people. Because if you're sharing what you're joyful about, what you're passionate about, it's always going to resonate. If you're not, you're going to look in the back and they're going to be looking at their head down. That's true. Like, I think for me, Turning Point honestly came very early on. Like, I think the fun part of my journey has been I've had like six or seven different Turning Points. Um, that's just the nature of this beast. But I guess my first one uh, probably be like early, like late middle school, early high school. Because again, as someone that just loved basketball, I didn't know what my actual future in it was going to be. I wanted to learn more about it, I wanted to get smarter about it. Like I had a very small friend group that loved basketball the way that I did. It's like, okay, well now I'm online all the time. I, I still want to talk about this, where's it go? And so I end up uh, turning myself into that man of an NBA Facebook page called NBA Talk. I'm not sure if it's still up at this point or not. But you know, in terms of finding your lane and finding a niche and you know, providing value to someone else, the way I became an admin on that page, uh, had Twitter very early stages. Everyone's following Mark Stein, who was at ESPN at that point. Everybody waited for the ESPN notification for free agent news, transactions, stuff like that. There was this guy named Adrian Wolstorowski at Yahoo at the time, who was tweeting out similar nuggets on free, agent, on free agency market, stuff like that. He was tweeting out stuff 20, 30 minutes ahead before you see the ticker on ESPN. I was like, hey, let me, you know, NBA pages are competing against each other. They want to get their news out first. They can get their pages shared, all that good stuff, get all the interactions, all the good stuff. So like, well, hey, let me send whoever the primary admin is, let me send him this note. Do that two or three times. They're like, oh, nah, let me see if it's on ESPN first. It possibly be ESPN 30 minutes later. Hey, this guy seems to know stuff a little bit earlier. Let's get him on the page to help us build this thing out. And that gave me the platform to talk about really what I really want to talk about. I love the news. I love the transaction, stuff like that. But, okay, what does it mean? This player is going to this team now. How are they going to fit? How are they going to help? And being able to just like talk about that, it informed me like one, more people care about this than I thought, and it's cool to kind of build that the community from there. And two, like oh, I can actually kind of do this. People like care what I have to say. Let me keep doing this. I'm learning now. I have people learning alongside with me. Let me continue to build this out. So from Facebook to Twitter, different writing opportunities from there, uh, bigger freelance opportunities. Got the right for Bleacher Report and SB Nation and Dime and stuff like that eventually get my first full-time writing job at Basketball News. And it kind of just blows up from there. That's when we get the podcast. I somehow get Steve to do the podcast with me. He's still doing it as of now. You know, I don't know if he's going to get tired of me or not. But, <laughs> but that's how it all just kind of builds out. But I think the first one was just <clears throat> being able to get that breathing room on Facebook to really express myself and find community with a bunch of folks that love basketball like I did. And that's where I kind of get to spread my wings a little bit. What challenges have you seen in terms of building that social following, building that content out? What, what kind of content challenges have you guys faced at, over, over time? Um, I get this circle back to something I said a little bit earlier, like <clears throat> you have to be secure in what you're doing and you have to be doing it for yourself versus I want to be big. Not that that is inherently a bad thing to want to make it, everyone wants security and stuff like that. But if you're only doing it for that, you're going to lose a part of yourself if you're doing it that way. And so in general, it's like some of the episodes, like, you know, we joke about it sometimes. Like one of our YouTube episodes earlier this regular season, we were talking about the Utah Jazz and their hot start. And you look at, like, the YouTube views on that episode versus one that was, like, Laker-led, and naturally the Laker one's going to get more clicks and stuff like that. If I didn't care about Utah, like, I'd be like, okay, well, no, we're never doing that again. We're never talking about them or whatever. But again, it's still at the heart of we love basketball. This is interesting. We're going to talk about whatever's interesting to us. We trust our audience is going to be interested because we're interested in stuff like that. And so just as a general note, it's trying to, on one hand, find a balance of being able to expand and reach a broader audience as you continue to grow in this, but also not losing who you are and what you're trying to do. You have to, sometimes you have to eat it on stuff like that. You know what I mean? You got to stop reading the comments. <laughs> Tell read the comments. Uh, what I would say is there's an uphill battle when it comes to X's and O's content versus hot take content to a degree. And so there can be an uphill climb when people aren't necessarily sure what it is or, hey, it's dry or it's boring. For me, I just 
put all that out because again, it's about creating something that you enjoy doing and creating something that people will enjoy and having enough confidence that if I do this the way I do with the prep work that I do and I explain it in a way that makes sense to you, instead of calling out, oh, they ran floppy two side 15 times, like NFL content, no disrespect. They say a lot of great stuff and it sounds fantastic, but do you really know what they said? Or would you, would you rather be able to have the concept when you watch and be able to take it to your friends and sit in a bar and explain, okay, well, I don't know what they call it, but boy, they like putting Nikola Jokic in that corner and all of a sudden they do a dribble handoff. You can see that and take that with you. So that's the goal is to kind of be like, it's, don't put me in a box. I don't like being put in a box. It's X's and O's, sure, but I want to make you laugh. I want to make you learn. If I could do both of those things, I won that episode. See you next time. Well, well said, fellas. All right, so we're going to swing it over to you guys. Ask away. Ask questions. Who's got questions? I'll take it. Um, Nikias, Steve, CP, thank you guys for your time. I'm Jacob Apostle. So prior to Summer League, I was advised to share my work. At what point in your career did all three of you finally feel comfortable posting your work online? Ooh, you want to take that one, CP? You want to take that one? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was right away. Like I showed you that first example, I didn't know what I was doing. But all I knew was I'm going to throw it out there and I'm going to get better over time. I'm going to keep learning over time. And, and for my fans, again, who want to see that journey, you could see it right now. You could sort my, all my YouTube videos from oldest to newest, and you'll see the evolution from there. So I really didn't mind in the beginning. I knew it was going to be trash, but I just knew that over time it would be a lot better. Uh, I guess I'll go quick. Uh, I had a little different mindset when it came to content because I, I, when I worked in the NBA, no social media for me. You no, know, we're going on Instagram and quiet, and no one knows. I'm not tweeting anything. Not put me on a blog. Not me. Um, so it was more so once we started to do the podcast is when I had to start to get comfortable with kind of saying the words that I out loud, putting myself out there like that. But that's where you have to believe and know yourself. And that's why that's important. Because if you have that belief, you're going to be nervous. But it's genuine. If you're trying to fake it and reach and be like, let me talk about the Lakers every single day. You don't even like the Lakers. You're not going to enjoy it. No one's going to enjoy it. So that's it's more, again, tying it back to that passion point, that genuine point, that authenticity. You have to have that to produce whatever you want. And you promise you there's so many lanes. You can produce whatever you want. I think honestly, like it's still trying to find that consistency. Like I think for few, like it's what you no, keep going. <laughs> it's my fault. But no, I, I could be honest with the folks. Like I think there is always at least a twinge of like nervousness of, hey, am I nailing this the way that I want to? Because now I recognize again, there's a benefit to people growing alongside with you and building that trust. But the thing about trust is that you have to hold that. It can take years to build it up. It can take a week to ruin it with everyone if you don't handle it with the care that it deserves. And so for me, like, there's always a little, little twinge of every episode. Like, I know I watch a bunch. I know I take notes. I know I watch clips and everything like that. It's like I trust that I'm doing the work. But there's still an element of let me make sure I do this the way that I want to do this. Let me make sure it's as clean as possible. To Steve's point, I don't want to just throw out a bunch of terms or a bunch of numbers. I want to make sure that people understand what I'm saying. When I say my things, are they coming out clearly, et cetera. Um, so like, I've been doing content for a long time. Again, the Facebook stuff is like middle school, high school. Um, but in terms of being super comfortable with, okay, I'm just going to do this, let's have it. Like, I would say, honestly, it's more so recently. And I still have my moments. That's why Steve's making the face now. Like, I come to him like, ooh, I feel like I did. And you were fine. It's totally fine. You're always <laughs> fine. <laughs> All right, next. Next. What's going on? James DiBiase. And um, I know we talked a lot about... Um, different platforms and what they bring. You know, Instagram might be different than Twitter. That might be different from LinkedIn. I think what's really interesting is you brought up the live stream. And for example, Macau Bridges, you had 10,000 people coming in and checking it out. And for you guys, I know you guys do the watch parties on playback. And what you just said, Steve, where the X's and O's content versus the hot take content, it's kind of an uphill battle. Can you guys talk about that? and? I guess the live stream stuff kind of ties into a lot of what you've said in like creating consistency, a community, interacting with them. Can you guys just talk about that a little bit? Well, I'd just say creating a community is so important and also it kind of ties to wanting to diversify the thought or the feel or the vibe when it comes to 
the Dunker spot, because if you think it's just this, it's more. Like, we're genuine human beings, we can talk, and, and I like to inspire people and uplift them and talk about life, and that's an opportunity to do that while also talking sports, as opposed to, you know, this is the pod. So, kind of, kind of, kind of make it a sandwich, you know what I mean? A sandwich of content. Because I don't know how to do TikTok, sorry. That's just to bounce off of what Steve said. Like it's important, and as CP said during the presentation, like it's important to do a lot of different things. As far as like the uphill climb with like hot take culture, it's it's a battle for me for sure. As I'll see stuff and just like, why does this matter? Why is this generating this kind of reaction? Why can't we just talk about what actually happened, et cetera? And like that was kind of the impetus of the pod itself. Like, okay, well, fine. Like, let's let's do this. Similar to CP's journey. CP didn't like how some of the coverage was with the Knicks. Okay, I'm gonna do it for myself. For me, as someone that was writing a bunch and learning a bunch, it's like, okay, I, I can talk about this now. We can do this now. Got Steve on the side, we can definitely do this now. Be the change you want to see, right? Yeah, there you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, a absolutely. And, you know, for live streaming, it, it presents that authentic connection. When I talked about that authentic connection with your audience, live streaming gives you that because it's, it's you and your audience on the other side. They're talking to you. You have to engage with them. You have to, you know, in ask them for what do you feel about this how do you feel about this situation the thing about with, with us in our live streams when they see me in front of the camera i understand their pain i understand we just watch the same game and so nine times out of ten we, we will have similar viewpoints about how things went down but other times when things differ then we'll have a respectable debate about it and it creates more conversation and brings more people to the platform All right, next uh, anyone in the back swinging the the, um, the audience mic around, or is Trav in the building? All right. Uh, all right, Joe. Uh, Should I go into the crowd? Uh, Rohan Cassells, thank you all for the presentation. I'm a Knicks fan as well, too, from Alberta, New York, so hopefully we'll connect. Um, what do you think drives a lot of the negative comments on, it's a three-part question, what do you think drives a lot of the negative comments online regarding players, coaches, or the content itself? Do you read them? And in reading them, have you actually found useful feedback that you have used to better your content and your podcast? Oh, what a wonderful question. I enjoy that so much. Uh, I would say what happens is, and it's been a shift, like I've always been someone who likes to reply. I like to reply to people. My dad brought me up and he said, people are going to think differently than you. Talk to them. Let's see what the differences are. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, some people could be way too disrespectful with the way they explain their differences. But one thing I've learned, people just want to be heard. So they come in loud and hot with some wild, crazy take, and you just respond to them. What do you mean? The second thing they say will be like a normal basketball point. Like, yeah, just backdoor cut, and I think they could have done more. And it's like, oh, yeah, just say that the first time next time. You know, just in my head I'm saying that. But... I think it's big to be respectful, and um, to me, I've always said in the caskets, man, I'm just a human. Like, I'm just Steve. I'm just a guy, and I want to be able to talk to anyone about the game of basketball. I have a level of expertise, or if I wanted to, I could flash it, but at the same time, I don't want to be that way. I don't want my analysis to be that way, as if I'm the expert, because I'm still learning. I get stuff wrong all the time. Hey, you know who didn't think Oklahoma City was going to be good this year? This guy. I had to own that. It just is what it is. But if you can talk to people who think differently than you, if you can, especially in this basketball world, there's no one way to win. So your philosophy might be tested, and the thing you think doesn't work, oh, defense, who does that? You need to shoot more threes, math game. Now you lose because they scored 67 points in the paint. You got to live with that. So the biggest thing I say was take the differences, respond to it, and that's helped me craft the content to be like, okay, this is what people are thinking. This is kind of the vibe. This is the cult, like, the, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't even know. The pulse of the culture. <laughs> so the, the comment section is important. It, it informs you on the content that you should make. Your audience is talking to you when they share uh, positive comments. Now, there's going to be a lot of negative. It's, it comes with the territory of social media. It's the anonym, anonymity aspect of social media, right? It's a random person with most of the time they have no profile picture. It's a picture of a dog or a picture of their favorite player, and, you know, they, they're just going off. A lot of those I ignore. 
And the way I look at it is, you know, the positive comments and negative, it all feeds the algorithm and brings more people to the platform. If it's constructive criticism, I'll take a look at it because, like I said, we're always trying to level up. We're always trying to get better and provide value. So it, it just comes with the territory. I, I do wonder how today's player takes it because it, there's no way that they can escape it. And, and so... You know, it's hard, especially for my platform, because we hear from the fans. We, we hear from uh, the fans of the sport, and sometimes the, the takes on the team aren't always glowing and positive. But whether it's positive or negative, we're going to share it, and hopefully we, we bring about a respectable debate. All right, next up. Um, hi, guys. My name is Sean Liu. I have a question for you, CP. Uh, so you talked about branding and creating content, right? And you mentioned a name like um, Stephen A. Smith. And that's obviously one of the most successful examples that we can think about. And um, so my question for you would be like finding the niche for you. So when you started creating your own content and creating your own stuff, so what gave you the kind of confidence that you had the niche, that you found it, and it was the right path for you to go on to create the content that made you successful today? I always believe that there is no fan that's more passionate than New Yorkers. Uh, when it comes to even what Stephen A. Smith and what they're doing on first take, you see uh, Mad Dog Russo's on first take now. And if you looked at my reel, I played a clip of him back from the early 90s, and that was because Christopher Mad Dog Russo, he and his partner Mike Francesa, they were the originators of sports talk and those debate shows. So everything that you see now is a derivation of what they started, and that started in New York. That's how I got my, that's how my passion built up as, an, as, a, as a sports fan is just listen to, listening to those guys debate back and forth and the interactions with the fans. And so when I felt like that was missing, especially in the 24-7 on-demand content era, I decided to act and I said, listen, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm not going to put it down because I know that there are more people like me out there. There are more diehard, delusional fans out there that want to talk about the team. And, and this is where we are now. It's been a great experience. All right. How's it going? My name is Dez. Can you talk more about how you prepare for your shows? Like what, what platforms, what uh, workflows? Like just like a typical week of how you prepare for your, your shows. Sure. You got some stuff? Well, I'll go quickly. Watching games. I watch a whole lot of games. A whole lot of games. A lot of basketball. Make sure I watch all the games and then kind of decide what's standing out during the course of that week and just kind of go about and see what do we want to talk about? What's the biggest thing that can happen? Because one of the cool things is the way that we try and do it is to talk about what's happening now, but in a way that if you watch it or listen to it a week later, it will still make sense. So to make it evergreen in a way that's a little bit different. Um, like when it comes to playoff time, watching everything and trying to project and see what's going to happen. But for me, it's watching the game. The game is going to tell the story, and it's my job to now tell it to y'all in a different way. Yeah, just to bounce off of what he said, like it is, the heart of it is watching a bunch of basketball, taking notes. Like I'm very much a <clears throat> open up notes app while I'm watching something. Let me type in some stuff. Uh, as we get into act, get closer to showtime, we record on Mondays and Thursdays or whatever. It's pulling up a Google Doc. All right, let's get the show flow together. What stand you know, during the regular season on the NBA side or W side at this point? But okay, what's standing out? Who's doing well? Second section. All right, who do we have questions about? Let's talk about it. Is this a is this a fatal flaw for a team? Is this just a bad stretch, et cetera? Go players or whatever. So you kind of structure it that way. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, it's become a lot easier to do so. Uh, the fun part of doing this with Steve is that we do, we don't see this game exactly the same. Well, like one, he's just a lot smarter than I am. But we do see it in a similar enough way to where I can kind of gauge based on some of the threads that he's doing. Okay, we're probably going to end up talking about this team this week. Let me go ahead and do some extra prep on the side to make sure when he does come through with what he's going to say, I got to say something different because, again, he could just say everything because he's Steve. Uh, so, let me come out. <laughs> so let me come with something different so we can kind of complete each other with the conversation, stuff like that. But it really does start with who's catching our eye. And that's where we can just kind of bounce around the way that we do all across the league, both leagues. So we just have fun watching basketball. So it becomes easy to plan from there. Yeah, preparation is everything. And when I talked about collaborations, one of the ways that we prepare for games is we do a game of the week preview. So if there's a hot team that the Knicks are going to take on, you know, Knicks versus Celtics opening night, we'll bring in a Celtics content creator and we'll get their perspective on it. We'll break it down with them. But that also allows us to tap into their audience. That also allows our audience to tap into them. So that's the power when I say rising tide lifts all boats. But from a preparation standpoint, like these guys said, it's watching games, it's taking 
look at the stats. What I like to do is I like to try to extrapolate three or four trends over the week, how this is seen playing, who's the hot player, like Nikaya said, and then come up with my own hypothesis of what I expect, how the Knicks are going to attack that, how they're going to counter with that. And then on the post game, I'll, I'll talk about that. Those game storylines, some of them will be known already just based on the trends of the week, and others you, you pull out. But also, you know, we've had Nikaias on the show to break down teams or, or to break down things from his perspective. I take a look at Steve's tweets on how he's breaking down film and things of that nature. So it's a, it's a variety of sources that, that we incorporate to get ready for a game. That way we can speak uh, intelligently after the game when, when things are all said and done. Next. Um, Bryce Williams. My question for you guys was, like, getting started, trying to build your brand on social media, would you guys suggest that it would be smarter to go, like, all in on one platform, say Twitter, or try to, like, diversify, say, Twitter, TikTok, and, like, blogs, like, stuff like that? CP has a better answer. I'm going to say everything. Don't just tie yourself to one. Did I nail it? I, I agree. You know, you, you want to try everything, um, understanding the nuances of each platform and seeing what works for you. Like there's a different audience on, on LinkedIn. There's a different audience on TikTok. There's a different audience on, on Instagram. I've been fortunate enough to where I've been able to build my brand and scale up and bring on additional uh, um personnel to help me with my social media editing, to help me with my content and to put that out there. So I'm able to post across platforms without having to do it all myself. Some of you might be limited on time, so try to choose one, see where it takes you, and then try to branch out from there. But you have to think, work smart and, and, and not hard in, in certain respects. So like I was telling you guys in the example, you may have content from a video that you can break it down, put it on a, on a, in a podcast, on Anchor is a free platform that you can use. That's just one, Buzzsprout is another uh, cheap one that you can use. From that video, create a still image with a, a caption from that video. Put that out there on Instagram. That, does, that won't take you too much time if you learn how to batch edit from one piece of content. So that's what you have to learn is, is how to make micro content from one piece so that you can work smart and, and Hard, you still have to work hard, but also working smart. And one more. All right, one more. How's it going? My name is Farzad Alam. My question for you is, what was the biggest challenge for you starting to create content? Like, how did you, how did you create something where you would be able to find an audience that would be, you know, that would relate to what you were sharing with them and could resonate with them? It's interesting. Do you have a good answer? Okay. Uh, well, for me, it was more just like, does anyone care about this backdoor cut? Like, does anyone care about like these double, this cool action with two pick and rolls, or like defense winning, like keeping it on the side and an extra rotation? Does anyone actually care? And then once I saw that, like two people did, I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll just keep doing it because I was watching anyway. So, ooh, I, I like that question though. <laughs> I think, one, honestly, the biggest challenge for me was just getting out of my own way <laughs> with posting stuff. Because, again, I want to learn, but I also I recognize I'm around smarter people than I, so I don't, you know, don't want to come off a certain way, stuff like that. And so, like, getting past that mental block was probably the first thing for me as I moved more, you know, from the Facebook stuff to doing the Twitter and doing actual freelance writing. Like, okay, now I have more eyes on me. I have to make sure that I am being smart about this. I have to make sure if I am saying it, I believe it. Or if I'm bringing something, I want to make sure I provi provide enough evidence to where, okay, this guy has done the work. Even if they disagree with what I say, I can tell this guy has an opinion he, that is based in what he's watched versus what he's researched. Um, so getting past my own mental block, like, okay, this isn't going to be the dumbest thing ever, you're fine, et cetera, that's probably been the biggest block for me. Yeah, for me, it was the, the struggle with consistency because in the beginning, you may not have many people watching or many people that will care. And at the time when I first started out, I had a full-time job as well. So I was putting in like 18-hour days, you know, after a game is over, I'm, I'm putting the podcast up and all that. Before you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. So I got to get ready for work at 7 o'clock. So it was a struggle. But as I said, you have to keep, stay consistent and, and keep on leveling up keep learning. You know, I taught myself everything. I didn't have a, a broadcast background. Everything I learned, I taught. I, I, you know, how to edit videos. What, what equipment do I need? Things that I, need. I taught myself everything. So you have to keep learning. And as I said, with, with credibility, why it's so important when we talked about it on the slide is that what I try to do is in the beginning, 
even though we had a small platform and I would bring someone on, I would kind of use that as kind of a snowball effect. So the next guy I bring on, I would send it to another person, say, hey, we just had this guy on, we'd like to bring you on. From that, it keeps going. And then next thing you know, you have Bobby Marks on, it's Kendrick Perkins, it's Stephon Marbury, Mike Breen. Because over time, when you build up that credibility and that trust, it shows that person, like, this is a platform we can trust. This is a credible platform. They're not going to be out here trying to embarrass me. They have a good following. They have good intentions. And that's what helps springboard you. All it takes is one. All it takes is, is one person, one fan, one anonymous viewer that can help springboard you in your career. So, so don't worry about getting the viral content or the numbers, per se. Just keep going for value. Focus on value, and someone is going to notice it and, and want to help you along your journey. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you.